Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, System Design of the Outworlds, Dream Grid. Our speaker is Fred Be Beckhusen, a.k.a. Beard Frederick. Fred is the owner and CEO of Microtechnology Service. This Inc., a 31-year-old tech background is in semiconductor manufacturing, Unix, Linux, and Windows system design, and many microcomputer and microprocessors dating back to the early 1970s. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for, for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or open SimCC with everyone, let's for that. Uh, so I'll get started with Dream Grid. Um, the best way to describe Dream Grid is to um, think of it as a wrapper around all of OpenSim. It's a, um, so when you ask what is, is it, and hang on a second here, I got a slight technical problem. Hang on, please. Awkward. So it's a um, community of people. It's a community of grids. The the main thing about it is it's a uh, a wrapper around OpenSim, and it's built primarily on other people's work. So what I've tried to do is to take a look at the security and may come up with a, a Windows, uh, it's AGPL. The A in the AGPL basically means it's a uh, use it any way they want. You can sell it, tear it apart, recode it. The only, and of course, it's full of licenses from all kinds of people like the MIT licenses. That OpenSim uses, but it's also hide it away uh, behind a firewall to the community. It's also, I think, the only authenticode signed version of OpenSim. What that means is that all the DLLs, everything that I've compiled has been compiled by me in a trustworthy way, a, uh, if, even if a single bit changes. The, uh, there's other things about it. Uh, it's secure. I've gone through with Apache PHP Perl and other things to make sure it's good. There's no ads and no spyware as well. Uh, another thing about it is um, it's very easy to use. You can literally just download it, click run the program. It'll build it, download it, install it, um, ask you a couple of questions. He just needs to know what is your, your avatar name or grid owner's name and password, and then it will boot your uh, robust and your welcome region. And it comes with just about everything I could cram into it, like a dynamic DNS server and auto updates and diagnostics and, you know, things like Joomla and WordPress. There's a meeting here uh, talking about a new WordPress plugin, uh, W4OS. That's, it's been around, but now he's been frantically updating it, making it improved. I'm much interested in that because Dream Grid will directly support that. Uh, there is also uh, a lot of code in here from, oh, God, I've got 50 years of coding and building upon, uh, well, hundreds of other people's work, like Diva Canto's Hypergrid and her Diva webpage. Uh, also, as Aka mentioned, added Joomla and WordPress as well, as far as front ends are concerned, and you can create your own. And then, of course, Ubit and the other core developers have gone and done an amazing job. I've had to make almost no changes to OpenSim in order to pull all of this off, which is quite amazing. Uh, and there is my little HUD magically finally appeared. So pardon me a moment while I catch up to where I am in my speech. 
Okay. Um, I may have gone too far, but that's all right. We'll catch up. So it's got all the C modules that are built into OpenSim turned on already. Non-player characters, data snapshots, prem limits is a question I get a lot. It, we don't have no stinking limits here in OpenSim, but I've enabled them. So if you want to have, say, 15,000 prem limits or 20,000 prem limits, you can. Uh, I've fixed it so uh, concierge, for example, which is not normally even known about, is enableable by just clicking a button. And I come up with some saying OSL and um, what do you call it? It's her built in pose ball. It's a very complex machine, requires a lot of OSSL, so I've set defaults for that as well. There's a lot of third party modules too. It has uh, the ability, for example, to, um, what's the word, to add on things like Globits is a DLL you can put in, but you also have to edit all the INI files. Yeah, right. Yeah, Ubit, I see that. No limits, cough, cough. There are no limits on prems. I actually did 1 million prems by accident the other day, Ubit, as far as prems are concerned. I had a runaway reser. It took a long time to figure it out, but it's what caused me to put in a stop scripts button in the machine so you can boot a system without without having scripts. So it's done by a lot of different grids. I noticed that like the great Canadian grid is here and Lost World is here and a bunch of other grids are representative. I really appreciate you guys for help show, pointing me out bugs in some of these third-party modules. So like red wide events, for example, is from Diva. I've modified that and put it online as a global, um, what's the word? I'll get to that in just a second. I've added destinations guides from Maria at Hypergrid Business, partnering from uh, Metropolis, anything I can find that's open source we put in here, like the destination grid, uh, guide. That's something that's automatically generated now without any manual labor at all. Uh, it just simply happens when you click the publicity button on your grid. Also, grid-wide events come from another company. You can go there, just click the grid-wide events button, and it gives you a place to add your events, and it shows up grid-wide. So it's really a grid of grids is the way I like to think of it. Um, also, I purchased Hyperica some time back from Hypergrid Business, and I've completely rewritten it and built it into a search engine that works grid-wide. You have to contact me on exactly how to integrate them. You can just um, change a few lines in your INI, or in the case of DreamGrid, just click Enable, and your grid will appear here in the Hyperica search engine and also all of your parts. So the other night I looked at it, there were about roughly a thousand regions online you could get to. There were uh, 43,000 items, which is more than Kitely has for sale. And about 127 grids are participating in this publicity button. So if you're running a dream grid and you want people to visit you, click the publicity button and fill in a picture and a few other things and you'll appear on Hiberica with just a few clicks. Uh, something that's really new, is really old for me. Uh, that's stats modules. People really love stats. So I came up with this um, stats module and hopefully this link will work here. We'll find out, but it's outworlds.com colon 8,000 slash stats. If you are listening, it should hopefully appear on our screen here. And if you'll click the screen to play the media, you should be able to see a interesting Screen. This is built into the latest versions of DreamGrid. It is a set of scripts and code that gives you uh, visitor maps. This happens to be Alexandria, which is a 3 million square foot 4x4 four four sim that we've Joe Builder and I have turned into, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six more sims like this. So it's a vast Egyptian realm. And it is uh, allows you to, if you click on this and zoom in, and you may have to click a second time to get it centered, you'll see that if you hover above it, there's little dots up here of all kinds of different colors. These are where those visitors have been. Uh, also, if you scroll down, you will see more visitors by day, time and sim. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because I'm always short on time. So if you want to, it's outworlds.com colon 8,000 slash stats, and that is part of your system. Now, here's a, a slide of it. Uh, hopefully, this will have res by now. It is a, a little blurry because it's a big slide. This shows you the times of day and the number of people who visited 
that particular day. Uh, I think it goes back 30 days, 90 days now is how long this has been out. So you may not be able to go too far back in time unless you've been running all of my betas. Uh, it goes back 90 days by default, but it stores up to a number that you can set as well. So a year or more based on disk space. So this is this one's kind of interesting. This is um, our welcome region at the Outworlds. Now, Debbie, um, she's over here in the audience, and I have been working for 15 years. We've had a sim like this in Second Life, and so this code dates all the way back to, I don't know, 2011. And, oh, yeah, I changed the size of the screen. Let's see here. It actually should be kind of square, but that's all right. We'll go back to this. The, um, the stats here looked really odd because you can see there's color dots running all over the map out to sea. And I thought I had bugs for a long time until I finally tracked somebody down and asked what they were doing. So they were taking pictures. Uh, Sorry, Fred, if I'm um, cutting in on you, but we lost your voice. We can't hear you anymore. Can everyone hear me? This is Galen. Testing, testing. I think we lost Fred on the uh, Skype stream and we will get him back as soon as possible. Stand by. Okay, Skype uh, has lost Fred, but he's coming back. And so we will resume as soon. There we are. So there I didn't he is. See it. I Welcome saw, back. Yeah. Either it timed out or blew up. Sorry about that, folks. Can you hear me now? An old movie yes, we can. Now, yes, okay. we can. Thank you, guys. Uh, where were we when I dropped off? I can maybe go back. Let's see if it's about the stats. Yes. Okay. And then I moved on to this 504 visitor day in a second life. And that's when we lost you. So when you lost me. So, well, it's second life. I shouldn't have used the word. I just said the other big grid. <laughs> Okay, so this was a day when we had um, 504 visitors. This was back in uh, 2014, I think. We've been working about five years on this particular piece of code. Uh, this is what it's like when you have a lot of visitors and each dot represents where they were per minute. So the idea here was to spread them around and let them go visit the castle in the lower left, the game in the lower right, the fairy region here, the unicorn region there. This is something Debbie Edwards and I had worked on for years, and it culminated in this moment here when you can see people just didn't hang around the upper right-hand corner where the freebies were. Yeah, second what? <laughs> the other grid. Okay, so then there's tides and birds and auto teleport. There are some unique features in Dream Grid. It has a GUI, but it also has its own web server, and it can talk to OpenSim, type in instructions, go directly in via the XML RPC. I mean, it's a wonderful creation for a programmer because there is just literally a ton of stuff you guys never see under the hood that were ideal for what I'm doing. I'm able to, you know, quit regions, start regions, peek inside them. Plus, I've done some things inside the database. One of the things is to find out what regions are online and automatically produce a clickable map that you can go to. Um, and we're always going to be running short on time here. Let's see here. I, can, I don't even have a clock on my screen at the moment. Where did it go to? Just a second, please. I got to make sure I'm not running out. You have five, you have five minutes. 
Okay, that's good. So mm -hmm. here's the beauty of the system is you can click a button, add a region, and you can start it with just typing in a name and hitting save. You don't have to do much more than that. You can make it bigger or smaller, do a million options, but that's all you really have to do. There's no DOS, no editing of INI files whatsoever. Also, you can back it up, you can save it, you can back it up six different ways, a database backups or backups, IAR backups for all your visitors. You can load and save ORs and IARs. It's got built-in diagnostics. I've worked on a great deal on that for automatic dynamic DNS, automatic uh, universal plug and play. So usually it just starts and works. Of course, there's a lot of broken brain dead routers out there and people that are double natted behind two firewalls. But for example, on Contabo, after it's been figured out, it needs to install a half a dozen you know, service packs and things like that, which it'll automatically do. It'll just come up and work. Um, this is one of the better pieces. It what makes it a grid of grids, and that is that there is a whole bunch of universal plug and play type code that also ties in with a dynamic DNS system. That's probably why you see a lot of people wandering around is something something dot outworlds dot net. It also supports inworlds.net, but the architecture is there's some machines I wrote, about 100 lines of Perl in the DNS server that run the outworlds.net and inworlds.net grids. I'll probably be adding more, like it could be, have a Hyperica grid as well. It's just a matter of me adding a few lines of code to support it. That's what makes it a grid of grids. Now, each grid is standalone and it's private. So you don't have to worry about your data leaking out, as, except for the usual open some ways. It's also got the ability to do a lot of extensions on open sim so on a per region basis you can turn physics of this type or you can turn maps on or off or have prim limits on a region and not have them elsewhere that's all done by dream grid simply reading the ini files that exist adding a bunch of features onto them and then interpreting them and making other files so here you want to make a region click add click, click uh, Um, put a name, hit save, you're done. Um, it Smart Start just is a way of, uh, if it's not for that, is I have 170 different regions available. You can click a button and load them all into a big grid like this. It doesn't cost anything, and you have a large grid. Uh, it has an endless land and seas module. This is something I've been working on for some time. It lets you just fly anywhere like a flight simulator or a boat simulator. You can just go from one grid to another region to another. It'll automatically create regions around you to so you can walk or fly there. And it has the temporary button so that it'll tear them down after you leave if you want. I've also added things like landscaping. So you got an automatic landscaper to landscape those or any region. There's a whole library here of terrains that you can use that you can build terrain library and load the terrain library with the click of a button or open sim. These modules are there in everybody's grid that you're looking at. Trees and plants, terrains are all there. I just have automated and brought them out in a visible GUI. Here, that's going to go under C feeders and it will not be any help time. Sometimes I overlook something and it blows up. So I just go in and uh, get a crash report sent to me. Uh, if you fill that in, I would know who you are and I'll let you know why it crashed and fix it. So a couple of stats I passed on to Maria. There were about 3,327 unique DreamWorld systems in this year alone. About 5,500 I track. Um, okay. So that's kind of where I'm at, and there's a bunch of ores and so on and so on. So I just want to tell you where I'm going to be at. Let me skip ahead here to the very end, back up two, and let it load. I'll be over here in uh, either Expo Zone Six, where we have a demo ore, and OSCC Expo Three in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, where I'll be. For the next hour to answer any questions uh, other than what comes out today. Okay, that's fascinating, Fred. I'm afraid we're out of time. Sure. But thank you for an informative and interesting presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org 
to see what is coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session, which will begin at 10.30 a.m. in this keynote region and is entitled the Barbara Truman Planetarium. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 21 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC. Expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and the audience.